Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the show. I am so excited to be here today because for those of you watching live, it is the first show in a really long time. My kids are back in school, and I'm so excited to be back in the groove of weekly Facebook Lives for you guys. So if you don't know me, I am Carrie Roldan. I am the business BFF, and I am so excited to be here with you today because my guest is, she's been, she's a longtime friend now, uh, somebody who I met and instantly fell in love with, like you know those people that you just have an instant connection with. Um, and we actually met because we were in a joint venture community together and she was excited about my book, Run Yourself Happy. And so we connected through being runners and being excited about that. And then I got so thrilled about what she was up to in the world. So I want to talk about today, we are talking about business as a force for good. And I'll be honest, when I first started to talk, talking about Allison, talking to Allison McKenzie about this, I didn't really get what she was doing. And over the years of getting to know her, I get more and more excited about the power behind Allison McKenzie's mission. So I'm going to introduce you to her. Allison McKenzie makes it easy for businesses to be a profitable force for good, helping businesses to support causes that tackle poverty, education, and social justice. Allison's keynote talks, training, mentoring, and best-selling books, Give to Profit and Hartitude, have favorably changed the lives of thousands of people worldwide. She loves doing humanitarian work, traveling, fundraising, and living and running by the beach in Scotland. I'm so excited to have her on today. I'm going to put your face on Allison. Hello. Welcome to the show. Hi, Carrie. It's just, and everyone else, it's so lovely to be here. I'm absolutely thrilled. Thanks for inviting me on. You're welcome. And this isn't your first time on the show, actually. It's been ages. <laughs> but Allison was one of my very first guests, like back in the olden days when we were on Hangouts on Air. So I'm so happy to have you here today, Allison, and to talk about what you're up to in the world. But before I do that, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention your recent TED Talk. That was like a big deal. It's amazing to be on the TED Talk stage. So before I even ask you how, how you got into doing what you're doing, can you just tell me a little bit about that experience? Oh my God, it was incredible. Um, I mean, it's, it's funny because I'd always said if I wanted to do a TEDx TED, or TED Talk, I wanted to do it in a place in Scotland, which is called Findhorn, which is a spiritual retreat center, eco village, um, and very, very, very special place. So when I got the opportunity through a friend to, you know, to be one of the speakers there, it was just like, oh my God, I'm going to be in Findhorn, the number one place I wanted to speak. And they have the most amazing, um, it's like a round auditorium. It is just, I mean, it's just such a special experience being up there. Um, and you know, it's funny, I have, I have, um, I've spoken for years. I, when I was young, I used to hate speaking in front of people. And now I just absolutely love it. And I've trained many, many people on how to do it. But my God, preparing and being able to get your story into 18 minutes. Oh, my Lord. That was one of the most challenging things I've ever done in terms of, you know, I can stand up and talk for hours and hours and hours. But nailing your message and being conscious of things like I've got to keep this relevant for the room plus the live stream, plus what goes out on the platform. You're speaking to all these different audiences. So, no, a phenomenal experience. Everybody was brilliant and just so thrilled to have had the opportunity and full of gratitude as well, you know, to be able to share the story and to share the message. And part of that message for me was definitely giving... Um, one of the things I wanted to do was to give the young genocide survivors in Rwanda who'd inspired me so much... Um, more of a voice, you know, just sharing their message a little bit more. So that was really, really important to me as part of that. So I, I'm i just, here's what I'm hearing and what you just said, um, that even though you spent a long time in your business really honing your craft, right? I know you've been a speaker and a trainer for many, many years, that um, getting on the TED Talk stage, one, was a total 
manifestation of a dream, right? You had always imagined, and not just imagined that you'd be in a TED Talk, but that in that particular mm -hmm. place, right? Mm -hmm. I love it when that happens, when yes. just the universe rises up to meet you and be like, here you go. Um, so I absolutely love that part of the story, but also that it was a big part of your up-leveling, right? Of you, mm -hmm. that version of who you need to be to serve, to, in, to what's the word, to, carry out your mission on on a bigger scale right on a global scale totally i mean there's so th many things to consider when it comes to doing a talk like that because you know it is about well what is the message that i want to get out there that's going to have more longevity yeah. you know because it's going you know if, if you do it well enough it will go on the platform and um so it's yeah it, it was a big deal i mean i've never never rehearsed a talk so much as I did for that you know I recorded it I would walk down to the beach I'd be doing it every single day again and again and again and again until I just felt really comfortable um and then then on the day it was really funny because on the day you have this rehearsal which is also fantastic so you have a dress rehearsal with all the all the technology and when I went to do mine my slides weren't working in the dress rehearsal but you only had one shot so when I actually went live, the first little bit of it, I'm like fiddling with the slide thing because I'm trying to see if the slides are going up behind me without turning around. And I'm just like, oh, gosh. But no, thoroughly recommend it to anybody. Um, yeah, phenomenal experience and very, very grateful that I've done it. Um, would love to do another one at some point, but in no hurry because, my gosh, it's a big investment of time. But loved it. Oh, I love it. And I love that it was a manifestation of a dream. And also that you had to, just like the rehearsing and the practicing and the, like you had to step into a different version of yourself, right? You had to take yourself um, to the place. I always talk about behave like the person that you want to become, right? The person who's standing up there giving a TED talk needs to see themselves as a global leader with a big world changing mission. And so I love it. I love that part of your story. So let's back up a little bit. <laughs> Since we start, well, I do want to post the link to your TED Talk. So, um, do you, you. if you don't Thank have it, so if you have it off the top of your head, do you know the link? Or if you can send it to me later, I'll I'll put it in there. Yeah, yeah, I'll send I'll send it to you because it's on their platform, so it's got a whole big long reference. Okay, so everybody who's watching on replay, the link will probably be in the comments. If you're on YouTube, it'll be in the show description. And if you're listening to the podcast, it will be in the show notes. So Allison, let's start at the beginning. Um, I introduced you as someone who helps businesses become a force for good, basically learn how to incorporate giving into their business model while still being able to increase their profits. And when I heard that the first time, I was like, that sounds... I didn't, like, I didn't get it, right? This was years ago, but how can I give and increase my profits at the same time? So can you tell me just a little bit about how you started doing this work? And we'll- Totally, totally. I mean, like many, many other people, I went into business, if I'm perfectly honest, to earn money. You know, I was coming from a job and I needed to continue to earn money to live in this world that we're living in. And so I just, I can, I can remember having a conversation with a business coach before I, you know, I'd, I'd left my previous job and said, I want to do something that's charitable. And she said, oh, no, no, no. You can't do that until you've got everything set up. And I believed her. Um, and now I know that that's absolute nonsense, that actually growing a business by supporting charities and social causes is actually a really good way to take your business forward. But, you know, like many others, I set up a business and I was focusing on bringing in the money. And, you know, I would do one or two little things, but nothing major. And I ran my business for about seven years on that basis. Um, I built up, started off doing therapies, coaching, that kind of thing. Had moved more into, I was running a full-time training consultancy business, um, doing lots of different types of work, people development and personal development courses in workplaces. And um, I then just really decided I'd had enough, <laughs> had enough of, of going into different organizations. And I was just looking for something that was gonna feed my soul more. Mm. And I just felt there was something missing. I always felt that when I saw film footage of wars and natural disasters, you know, I'd just be so upset because I didn't feel I could go and do anything to help. Cause you know, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a fire person or a doctor. And yeah, I just felt helpless. And so, 
I remember I'll, I'll always remember this day so clearly I had had enough I'd just come back from three weeks doing some training consultancy in India for a company and I just didn't like the way they were treating their staff and I just went, walked in I was on a I, it was you know it was it was literally a three-week contract that could have been extended and I went I, I went in and said listen you don't need me I've done everything you need me to do I've trained up your people as well um so how about I finish up? And I went to the pub with my sister and she said, what are you going to do now? And I'm like, well, I've still got the rest of my business. Um, but what I want to do is something more meaningful. And I knew I wanted it to involve young people, to involve travel and to make use of my skills in some way. And so I set the intention that that's what I was looking for because that's the way I live my life. Um, and the very next day, I had an email in my inbox that came in about a film um, with a woman called Laurie Leiden, who's one of my best, oh, my closest best friends now. Um, but she was doing some work with genocide survivors in Rwanda. And I was just so inspired. I just immediately reached out and said, love what you're doing, love to chat. We spoke on the Monday and eight weeks later, I was up the top of a mountain in Rwanda. And um, that first trip was meant to be a one-off. It, um, it wasn't. It just broke my heart, burst my heart open with love couldn't walk away from these young people and so came home and I thought well all right okay so what do I do now how do I fit fundraising into an already hectic life and I get you'll understand this and I'm sure many people watching and listening to this to this will too that when you're running out your own business and trying to continue with life that's challenging enough how do you fit yes. in fundraising, you know so I started, um, I was like, well, what can I do? So I started actually making, I don't know if you can see these bracelets. Can you see that? I um, can. So these are what we call, I call them miracle bead bracelets because they light, they're luminous in the dark. And I started making these for charity and taking them along to, to just business networking events, you know, and you do the usual, this is who I am. And I just happened to go to Rwanda and I'm making these bracelets to raise money. And every time I go to an event, I would make hundreds of dollars on these bracelets. And I was like, wow. But what was amazing was that I then started to become more memorable for doing that. And I was invited to do lots of different speaking at events and different house parties. And on the back of that, I was getting more and more one-to-one -one clients and different business clients. And I was like, that's interesting that my volunteering and my fundraising is leading to other paid business. Um, and over the years, there's many, many different things that I've done that have continued to lead to more business. And then people started saying, well, how do you grow your business by supporting a charity or by fundraising? And I'm like, oh, all right, OK, maybe I need to teach around that. So that's kind of how I've ended up doing what I'm doing now. I love, OK, I love your story for so many reasons. I love that it happened out of intention, right? You basically surrendered, said, all right, I don't like I built a business to make money uh, and I'm making money, but I'm not happy. Right. Like you, I'm sure you left your job because you were making money that, and you weren't happy. <laughs> totally. I mean, and, and I mean, you know, like many others, you know, when you go into business, my first goal was, can I earn as much as what I earned before? Yeah. Which I did, but then you're still left empty. Yeah. You know? Oh my God. Okay. I didn't know we were going to talk about this, but that's why I do the work that I do. Right. Like I help people, become the version of themselves they need to be to take their business where it wants to go, right? And what I am hearing is, and I, I've seen you, I've watched you over the years do that. I've watched you let your business lead, right? Let your purpose lead you in the direction that you're meant to go. Um, but like, it just, what could have happened if you had stuck to I'm making money, but I'm empty, but I guess I have a decent business, right? So I love that you surrendered and that instantly, that the next day, instant gratification is amazing to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that the next day opportunity presented itself and that you were open and ready to say yes. Mm -hmm. And then it changed everything, right? And I love, I have this image of you when you say you were making these bracelets for charity, like were you literally just sitting in your living, like went to the bead shop and I love that. I just love that. Like how much of I'm thinking, of course, of course it took off because you were, you were taking time out of your life and pouring your love and energy and intentions into these bracelets. Of course they sold. Mm. But what struck me the most is of course, it's funny because even when we know these universal principles, they still come as a, they still surprise and delight us. Mm. Even though it's not a surprise, we're still surprised and delighted. Mm -hmm. And I love that, um, 
I forgot what I was going to say. So, uh, <laughs> oh, um, I just love this, that it makes absolute sense to me because we both know that people don't buy what you do. They buy who you are because at that time, right, you were still, you were still a trainer or a coach in some sense, right? Which there's plenty of trainers and coaches, but people don't buy what you do. They buy who you are and selling those bracelets really showed who you are. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, um, Talk to me a little bit about what you've got going on now, because I've watched you uh, since the TED Talk. I've watched you doing some amazing things and really um, taking what you do, right? So helping people use their business as a force for good to the next level. So can you tell me about how you're doing that now? And, and specifically, I think people who are watching are interested in, okay, so how do I do it? Do I make bracelets? Like what? Mm. <laughs> so help me out here. <laughs> yeah, well, there's probably lots of different strands to that because I think when I started off, it was all about um, incorporating fundraising, I suppose, and teaching people how to incorporate fundraising into their business and particularly into their marketing. And that's something that is called cause marketing. And it is important to recognize what cause marketing is. And I've got lots of different videos and things on my website around this and, and on YouTube. Because, um, and actually, I didn't realize this until I was writing my book, that there's legislation around doing this in many countries around the world, including the UK, where I am, and in most of the US states. And it's different legislation in most states, which is really complicated over your, your side of the Atlantic. Um, so it is important to understand what it is. And I'm just saying that so people are aware and you can check out, I've got blogs and I can give you the links to some of the stuff around that. But it's, you know, so I started off helping people look at how they could incorporate fundraising into their marketing in ways that are effective. So effectively, it's a bit like, if you think about, in fact, here's, here's something to think about. If you had the choice between going if you were wanting a really, really good cup of tea or coffee or whatever your, you know, your favorite tipple is, and you have the choice between going to a cafe that is fine, this what they serve is all right, but it's maybe a little bit bland and it doesn't really do much, or there's another cafe which sells just as good quality and they stand for something, they maybe sell, they maybe use organic foods, they're all about recycling and caring for the environment and maybe they support a few causes and hire people that that maybe would struggle to get jobs which of the two cafes would you go would you buy from oh absolutely number two yeah so when I do that and when I ask that when I'm speaking nearly the whole audience well the whole audience does put their hand up and at which point I say so if you're a business that isn't supporting causes that is how much business you're losing to your competition Oh, I got goosebumps. What an amazing visual. Yeah. And you know, obviously, you still, we still need to be, we, you know, we still have to offer really good products and services that people want. It isn't a fix for, 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 for a broken business, you know. But if you're in a position where you've got lots of people offering the same thing, then it's going to, it becomes increasingly important for us to have something that we stand for. And actually, the figures are, I mean, there's so much research out on this, which I'm not going to bore people with on this, this, this interview. But it, it, I mean, it's over 80% consistently of consumers are looking for businesses to demonstrate they care. They want businesses to be doing good and solving social problems in one way or another. And supporting a charity is such an easy way to do it. And yet what so many of us, and especially in the fields that we operate in, Carrie, you know, so many people we know are motivated to make a difference. They want to help people. And yet what happens is we keep our business here and then our giving here and we don't bring the two together. But when we bring them in together, it helps us save time and be more effective. And it, it, it makes it clearer to others um, in terms of what we stand for, what's important to us. And um, yeah, people choose to buy from, they choose to partner with, they choose to work for um, people who care and businesses who care nowadays. Um, so, so that's maybe, I suppose, the charity piece and why that's really important, which I didn't realise, I was just disco discovered it by accident. And my book is all about the charitable piece, but actually I'm now looking more and more about the social impact in terms of saying, also saying to people, what's the bigger picture? What impact do you want to make in the world? You know, and 
how can we look at how you do that? And part of that might be through supporting a charity. So you asked about, you know, different ways that we can support charities. We can include fundraising in our marketing. And I know some people will probably be doing that, saying things like, you know, donating 10% of profits to charity, which actually in most countries, that is a statement that is definitely not seen to be um, transparent and legal by most regulators um, because it could be misleading in terms of you might not be making profits. And then from a consumer perspective, they think they're giving and then they're not. Ah. Yeah. So they don't most in most countries, they do not like the phrase donating 10 percent of profits or any percentage of any profits. Um, it's much more about transparency is much more about stating the amount. So, you know, five dollars, ten dollars would be. So, uh, oh, oh, instead of this is so interesting. I'm I'm learning something and I, I wanted to say um, my brother just recently started a business and he has um, his business is be free apparel and they sell amazing workout clothes, like yoga inspired workout clothes. And they support B charities, right? They, I can't uh -huh. remember a specific charity, but they have a specific B charity that they give to, but I think they are saying 10% of profit. So I'm learning something and I'll be able to direct my brother to the website. And I know, I know what they're doing, right? I know that they're in their pricing, they're making sure that they're able to give 10%. Yes. Of course, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, that's what you do. But yeah, check out the percentage piece. I've got, there's a whole chapter on this in my book around best practices um, and also what you need to check out legislative side of things, depending where you are. So um, I want yes. the title of your book. Um, <laughs> Alison, I, I want you to give the title of your book oh. and then let people know that I have linked in um, on YouTube and on, uh, on the podcast, I have the link to get your books but um when you say in my book are you talking heartitude or give to profit give to profit so I give to profit uh, yeah give to profit how to grow your business by supporting charities and social causes which anybody can get on amazon or the work the book depository if you're in other countries that don't have amazon yeah so um so yeah so i mean there's so many different ways we can raise money for causes we could volunteer for causes you know um that can be a brilliant way to grow our business because you actually, what I find, I mean, I couldn't believe what half started happening with when we were, you know, I was getting involved in the work I did in Rwanda um, because we were making a film and it was a Hollywood produced film in the end. And we had some major backers. Some of the biggest names in the States were our backers. And I was getting invited along to these events and meeting these people because we had a similar heart connection. Yeah. rather than for any other reason so doors just open when you have a very similar purpose and connection um but you, it just expands your network and deeper relationships i would say you form far deeper relationships and it happens quicker too so that's 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 another reason why something like volunteering as well as as being good for us and good for others um and actually long-term partnering it, you know studies show that when businesses partner with charities it's actually far more effective than just giving money you know, yeah. if you have that long term relationship. So we can do things like volunteering. The one that I absolutely love, one of my favorite things is um, sourcing social suppliers. So this yeah, is that. such an easy one. So we already spend so much money on what we need for business. Right. And in so many cases, there are social enterprises that are B Corps that supply what we would need. So by simply buying from them, we are now having impact. Now, what's important, if we go back to that, you know, that question I said at the start about, you know, um, who would you buy from, a, a, a business that's um, supporting causes or a business that's not, you have to let people know what you're doing, yeah. which is why, again, it's increasingly important to have things like an impact page on a website and to be sharing what you're doing and, and to treat this very much as... Um, a way of raising the profile of the cause. I know a lot of people don't like saying what they're doing for giving, which is fine personally, but in business, um, if, if the intention is to grow your business by supporting causes, you need to be saying what you're doing, but actually keeping quiet does the causes absolutely no favors whatsoever. So that's definitely one of my favorites. So I'm loving this and I wanna repeat some of the things that I heard. So first of all, I love that you said this, trying to integrate social giving in any capacity 
is not a fix for a broken business. <laughs> like if you have a, if you're supporting great causes, but your product sucks, um, it's not enough. So I just wanted to say that like again, <laughs> because it's really important. Um, and then I heard you talk about um, social impact in different ways than just charitable giving. So this is kind of, these are kind of ahas for me. Um, although I've seen them in the marketplace, right? I'm recognizing, like, I really like what you just said about um, sourcing social supplies and thinking how often have I looked on somebody's website or like I just recently bought the Passion Planner and I was super excited about the mission behind the planner and the fact that they were, and this, um, they're not even, I'm, they're probably sourcing social, whatever you just said, uh, they're probably sourcing responsibly, mm -hmm. but um, I like the way they're giving, right? Part mm -hmm. of their mission is giving a passion planner to someone in need, right? Mm -hmm. And how many times I've made those decisions, right? I'll pick a product and I like it because, oh, the I, I'm thinking even food that I buy, right? It's one thing that it's organic, but like the chocolate that I'm buying, like, is it responsibly sourced? Like I'm paying attention to stuff like that on a regular basis. And so what, one of the things that I just gleaned from what you said is having an impact page on your, your website. It hadn't occurred to me. It had occurred to me to put it in your mission or on my homepage, but the very fact that there could be an impact page and that people could see that when they work with me, this is the good that is happening in the world. And I was telling you before we got on the call that I was so proud to be part of an event this weekend where, and it was great, right? Because the, I, the woman who started the event just said, hey, you know, this is why we're all here, blah, blah, blah. And this is the cause that I support that I'm passionate about because it was a, an event for business owners. And her cause was about helping um, underprivileged women around the world start their own businesses. And she had a goal of raising $2,000 for that cause over the course of the weekend. And we did it. And it was like so gratifying for everybody who was there. And this woman's sales were amazing, right? Because from the beginning of her event, she was showing people, I have a heart for women entrepreneurs, mm. right? And who were most of her customers? Who were most of the people who got from her? women entrepreneurs. So I know I just said a bunch of things, but I want to touch on, I want to give those three points. Um, and of course, I want to talk about your um, give to profit community because I'm excited that you have created that. And I'm wanting to, I'm wanting you to explain a little bit about how it works. So to recap, this is not a fix for a crappy business. <laughs> it's not a fix for a terrible product. However, it is our expectation of businesses these days to care about something, especially at least from the perspective of where I am in the United States, our expectation is especially big business, right? We want to know that if you're making oodles of money, that you're doing it responsibly and that you're doing something good with it. And I think the big shift that's happened in the past five to 10 years is that smaller and smaller and smaller businesses are recognizing that we need to do that too, even when it comes down to the solopreneur level. So I'll shut up so you can tell us um, about your give to profit community and really what you're doing in your business now, how you are making a bitter, that bigger impact and empowering people like me to make a difference. Yeah, oh, thank you so much. Um, and there's actually probably one thing that I would just like to add to what I said as well. And I find that when, when especially for some of the audience, um, you know, and if you're at an earlier stage in business and in the caring sort of business, coaching, therapy, that kind of thing, um, I find supporting causes also helped me raise my prices. Oh, yeah. Because I, it, was, it was very clear, to, you, know, I, you know, you know what it's like when people say, oh, can I just come in? Could we maybe do a swap? Could we do this, could that? And part of that is we're sending out the vibes that that's what we are, you know, we're, we'll take in. But actually, as soon as I started doing volunteering and fundraising, I, 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 had, I had the framework and I said, well, no, you know, I do so much for business. This is what I do. You can go on for good causes that it's on my impact page. If you want to work with me, this is what you pay. And it really it was brilliant. It gave me that clarity. And I increased my prices um, to enable me to have more time off to go and do the stuff I wanted to do, which was volunteering and humanitarian work. So it was fabulous. Great experience. Yes. 
Um, so yeah, so coming on to the Give to Profit community, my lord, this has been a this has been a mammoth class. I mean, you were at the event where I just even had the insight of Give to Profit, that very very first event that we we met at. Um, I think it must be four years, four and a half years ago now. And it feels like a long time to get a community going, but there's been so many different things that have evolved. And so even now, I mean, I have opened my community, but I'm doing no big push whatsoever right now because I'm a let, let's grow organically girl. Um, and so I do have a community and there are a number of different levels. So for anybody wanting to learn how to do this, obviously there is my book. But for, I mean, it's um, very low cost. It's about $35, I think it is. There's literally, I've got a course on how to, re, how to um, it's called the fundraising challenge. So you can learn how to incorporate fundraising into your business and raise money for a cause that you want. You get access to all of that with live calls. We have community calls coming in um, and lots of other training um, at that level. There's a middle level, which is much more if you want to get support other than just how do you do the charitable piece. And then I, I have also have a, a leadership level for people who really want to do more than just one or two strategies who want to really go right how do I become a business for good and how do I incorporate this across the whole of my business and become a leader in this um so yeah so really excited to have that there that's just very recently gone live um, and I'm just beginning to invite people to join and it's been funny the last few years I have or a couple of years I've done a lot locally um and that's been interesting so i've been listening to what people have been saying and that's where the social impact piece came because people were saying well can you help me work out what impact i want to have and to clarify that yeah. and how do i articulate that you know come up with a social impact mission statement and what does that look like in my business and so that's why i sort of evolved the concept so that's something that i run workshops on that locally but that will i'll be doing taking that live um online and um, possible at the end of the year and i'm organizing um oh I'm, this one scares me what i'm about to say to you because it's the first time i'm admitting it publicly in the scale that i am <laughs> but next year in april 2019 the 24th and 25th in case you can make it over carrie okay. um, i am i am running um a two-day business for good conference and we are looking to get 300 350 people along to this event um we've got oh it's just lots of different tedx style talks we've got lots of impact that's going to be happening on the day it's going to be an event like no other it's just going to be crazy um so yeah so got that on the go too so lots happening very excited and i'm just so thrilled that there are so many other people in the world that want to do good because when i came up with this idea you know what it's like you have a business idea is there demand is there you know is there not and being taught that the only thing, you know, we've got to focus on the problem we're solving. And actually, this is an aspiration, not a problem. It's not an obvious one that people search for in Google. And yet people are interested. So, yeah, it's exciting times. I love it. So one, I need to just tell you that when you started to talk about your Business for Good conference, I got chills. So I know that that's going to be an incredible event. I'm, I know you already know that, but I just want to affirm that to you. And it was the first time you said it publicly. It is going to be amazing. It is going to be a force for huge good. I'm seeing massive expansion and connection and a total ripple effect coming from that event. And I'm already feeling how good that will feel for you. Mm. Right. So, no, I am like loving you in that. And yes, if there's any way I can get to Scotland in April, <laughs> <I'm right there. laughs> um, I want to give everybody Allison's link for her Give to Profit community. You heard her talk about the three different levels. And I love that because she's meeting you exactly where you are in your business um, and where you are in this journey. Like I told you, when Allison first started talking about what she was doing to me for, with me four years ago, I was like, I get it. I mean, I think that's awesome for you. Yay. But I didn't like, I didn't fully understand how essential it is. And Allison, I believe that's why it's taken four years for the community to evolve and, and sort of show up. It's not because she was dragging her feet. It's because um, the market had to catch up, right? Like all of us had to catch up with what it was 
that she was saying. All of us had to catch up with like, no, this is how we want to make our decisions. And this is actually how we want to um, create our businesses. And five years ago, people were in the place, I think, that you are, or that you were in the beginning. Like, you were yeah. just out of the game. And so it's no coincidence that you are doing the work that you are doing. I, I think I haven't given, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I haven't given your link yet. So let me give it. Uh, if you go to carryroldon.com forward slash give the number to profit, it will take you to Allison's um, give to profit community page. page. You can research all about the different levels, figure out which one's right for you. But I do want to encourage you, um, if you want to differentiate yourself from the market, right? If you want people to buy not just what you do, because they don't really buy what you do, but who you are, you need to check it out. And like Allison said, if you know you want to do good in the world, but you're not really sure exactly what your mission is, which by the way, I'm raising my hand to that because I know I want to do good. I know I care. I know that I want to make social impact and giving. I want to be a responsible business owner, but I'm like many of the people you work with. I haven't really gone deep into what that looks like for my business. So guess who's going to go to carryrolldown.com forward slash give to profit as soon as this broadcast is over. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. So um, thank you for sharing everything that you do with us. Your heart. I think you, Allison is like a total BFF. This woman is an amazing giver. She's an incredible coach, but an amazing giver. Allison, you've helped me so much throughout the years. I feel so blessed to call you a friend. And I just want to ask if there's anything that you want to add, any parting words you want to leave with my audience. I would just say if you want to support causes and do good, just do it. Think about what you do personally. There is no reason to keep it separate whatsoever. Bring it into your business and it will just, oh my God, I mean, I already loved what I did in my business, but it just gives a whole other oomph and that heart connection into what you're doing. And especially for those challenging days, which we all have in business, and it just pulls you forward because you're doing it for you're doing it for yourself and what's important to you, but you're actually doing it for others too, and that's a massive um, motivator. It's funny, I'm organising. You know about this. I'm building this school in Cambodia just now, and I've pulled together this team of twelve entrepreneurs, and oh my god, I can't believe what they're all doing to raise money. It's so just. I am so excited for them because I'm watching them go through what I've done in previous years. It is, give it a shot, see how you get on. Please get in touch. If there's anything I can do to help, get in touch. Love to help you on your journey. Thank you, Allison. You're amazing. Everybody watching and listening, head on over to carryrolldown.com forward slash give to profit. Thank you for being a guest on the show today. And I can't wait to talk to you again in the near future. Everybody who's watching and listening, Thanks so much, and we'll see you on the next show. Thank you.